Friday morning at McQueen Park in Gilbert, Arizona. Got some swallows flying around eating bugs, clearing the launch pad so there's uh, the range is, range is clear. I'm going to be flying some of these that I've replaced, some I've repaired, some I've never flown. It's another day to do a, a plastic rocket palooza and put some of these up and minimal setup today because I forgot my table and umbrella. It'll be kind of like launching in the 70s where <laughs> you just go out with no camera and nothing but a pad and a rocket and a motor and some sort of a launch device. But it's a beautiful May day here, early May, getting in some flying before the heat cranks up too high and uh, looking forward to it. A Helios number two. This is my second one of these. I have some sort of a weird fascination with this particular rocket. My last one separated, then the fins started coming off, and then I glued the fins on and glued on the launch or the uh, engine mount. So I tossed it and got another one. So this is the maiden flight of the second one. I've adjusted the shock cord, glued at the top, not down at the bottom. So it should deploy perfectly because that's the way all rockets deploy perfectly. All right, Helios up on a B44 and 54. Three, two, one. That's a heavy bugger. Even a B44 has a little hard time getting that thing up and out. Wow, that's amazing. And it came right back here. That's good. Time to live dangerously. I loaded the Helios up for flight number two today with a C-53. And let's put this up. It should go obviously higher. That B-44 barely got it off the pad. This should work a lot better. Five, four, three, two, one. Helios, after a C-53, much better flight. These things are super heavy. The nose cone comes already packed with clay, but that helped a lot. I have a little Manta going up. This one has a little glider. Hits uh, Apogee and falls off the rocket. Glides back down while the main rocket parachutes down, going up on an A-3. This is kind of fun. All right, these little manta with the gliders are kind of hard to track because do you, do you follow the glider or do you follow the rocket? <laughs> the glider's white, kind of hard to see, but we'll see what we get. Going up in five, four, three, two, one. Pop, here comes the rocket and the glider is, I'm just trying to stick with that. It is just hovering up there. It's amazing, that thing just moves. There's <laughs> way out there. Holy mackerel. Well, the little Manta 
landed right back at the pad basically but the glider is way out there I'm gonna get some steps in getting that but it just last time I launched it at a launch at a club launch somebody asked me if I trim the glider it's just a piece of styrofoam and it is perfectly trimmed it just glides like a champ and there it is just a little piece of styrofoam a little clip glued onto it I had to put stickers on that's painted and that was it pretty fun just flew my Manta again didn't film it AA3 and the uh, glider actually stuck to the rocket for a while on the way down until the parachute popped out but that thing I almost met the neighbors here's the wall to the park houses right there launch field way out there this thing hums it's amazing how well that little guy flies This is a Patriarch. It is one of the coolest ready to fly models I've ever seen. It comes with clear fins. Those fins are nice and clear. Got a little tip nose cone. It's paint, it looks like aluminum. Decorated with USA colors, US Air Force. And uh, this is going up on a B44. Kind of cool. First flight of this one. Range and sky are clear, got a little breeze, but we should be tilted right. Going up at five, four, three, two, one. Oops, separation. You know what? And I know why. Hit the grass, okay. Here comes a the shoot. These dagnap things, well, I'll do this in the post-flight brief here. Nuts. All right, let's see here. It didn't crack any fins. I was hoping it wouldn't. Okay, so what happens? The shock cord is attached to the lug here already, and it's attached way down here. So it's right in the line of fire of the ejection charge. I've had most of my plastic rockets like this burn off the shock cord because of that even because wadding goes down goes only right about where that is so what i've been doing is taking those off and mounting shock cords up here with the traditional you know three flap shock cord mount glued to the inside here and i forgot to do it with this one i've done it with my others and that's why this is a this is why i've called this the plastic rocket palooza redux because i've all the other ones I've done this with before, well, before and after flying, after I figured out what was going on. So luckily we're on grass today. If I'd done this out in the desert, I'm sure that thing would have been hammered, but otherwise it would have <laughs> flown well. So I will just reattach the cord using the old uh, uh, glued on shock cord mount and it'll be fine. Next is a heat seeker. I've launched this here before. Last time I did, it was so hot that the clay melted down in the tube, in the uh, nose cone tube. Um, but it all pushed back. Keep watching the heat around here. I was thinking it might be a little warm today, but it's not. It's good. So this is going up on a B44. Five, four. Three, two, one. Sweet. Oh, they come right back down. The swallows are trying to hit it. I think it's a huge bug.
heat the seeker down almost had a little nose in but good flight that's a good engine for this model this is a metalizer don't make these anymore it's a all chrome painted job with a clear sticker very cool everything is chrome chrome paint obviously we're gonna put this on a b44 another heavy plastic guy whoops missed that old pile of metal like cool little look like basically nine inch old time well old time now it was new when it came out that's to shoot probably a compromise between streamer and a big shoot with this heavy but not as not the heaviest thing I've blown today very good I used to use chrome polish in my car when I was a kid I wonder if that'll work on this metalizer now that I got fingerprints all over it and exhaust dust. <laughs> Very cool rocket. I have a Trax, Sky Trax actually. Another plastic one, not made anymore. The little payload section, I put an Estes altimeter in there. Going up on a B64. Shouldn't go that high, but that's perfect for this little park. Kind of a fun, pretty green little job. And the altimeter's in there and it's turned on. That's always important. Ready to roll. Sky tracks going up in five, four, three, two, one. Supposed to. All right, that thing's all laid out. Nice and shiny. Oh, and I lost the nose cone and the altimeter. So let's go find those. <laughs> I think I see the nose cone from here. All right, so needle in a haystack. There is the altimeter. <laughs> It's the, a brand new one, first time used, and that thing is pointed straight down. I'm not sure what, how I found it, but I did. And the nose cone is right there about, oh, like 30 feet away. So I taped the, no, I taped the nose cone on hard, but it still wasn't enough for the ejection charge to uh, cause the force of that altimeter to push that nose cone off and off it came. And I realized when I got here, with the altimeter I just got didn't have one of those little coolio hooks to hook onto the hook there and the or the yeah the opening there and the nose cone so off it went oh yeah and it went 167 feet so perfect for a little park like this Spectra up next. This is the one I bought for my wife because it has so many pretty colors. I knew she'd like it and she does <laughs> This is another real heavy job. It's going on a b64 Should be a nice flight five four three two one
Okay. Spectre down and out and good. There's another reason why I appreciate these plastic rockets is I can get my fat fingers in these big tubes as opposed to some of the little ones. <laughs> and there's more room for wadding and these don't have to worry about cramming these big chutes in there too hard. So that makes it uh, more uh, enjoyable because the better pack, the better chance you got to get to get it back. A rookie, another interesting plastic model rocket. This one separates right here, not here. So shoots tied to the shock cord, not the nose cone. Going up on a B64. Range and sky are clear. Going up in five, four, three, two, one. she comes it's another one where I had to adjust the shock cord from way down the bottom of the body tube you know this one I launched with a c65 at our last club launch and the shock cord separated had to have me and two other people help find it so I put the cord up close to the uh, right there where they should be instead of tied down here where it's for sure gonna melt <laughs> excellent flight I got it fixed and this is a great flyer now <laughs>